Uh, it was uh, quite a marathon of rather short the presentation, but I hope uh, it was uh, enough time to get uh, quite a good content of, of uh, each um, uh, session. So what I try to uh, present here and uh, conclude the, the, the event, uh, looking at uh, how to scale more than uh, you know uh, a typical large deployment. Then we'll have a short open discussion session about uh, how my idea and uh, we should be ready with this edition. <coughs> I would like to present first when someone approaches us at ACIPTO and they are looking at a rather big uh, deployment, not always from the perspective of uh, you know number of subscribers, but also from the perspective of the traffic and maybe from the perspective of the critical services. So we always suggest like, okay, let's start putting first a load balancer box, which should be really dummy and should be as simple as possible. Of course, doing quite a lot of uh, processing, but uh, those uh, 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 applications that you need to run fast and you can catch. So of course, it's load balancing, but then we put there like filtering, bad traffic, and so on, because we do this only with caching. So the performance is uh, uh, not affected. So here, we don't really have like a database. I'll present later a bit about the module we use for load balancing, and it can work with the text file. It's really important to, to be um, High available at this point because it will be the more like a single point of failure in rather big platform uh, and uh, of course focus on the security is uh, important being the guardian. What's the next node in, in the platform is the main call routing engine. So this is routing the services that must be available most of the time, like critical for the service, uh, and also oriented to be easy to scale. Maybe not like uh, you know having high availability of the single box, but because in front of it we have a load balancer, it can be actually be a farm of them. And if one of the boxes is down, we try another one, and eventually we replicate states between them. And it's fine not to have high availability for each node because these are more like an uh, application server for routing the calls. Then we, I mean, most of the people want to call and get a ringing phone very easily and be able to do the critical calls uh, very, very quickly. But to attract new customer or to keep existing customer, you need to add a new lot of services. Many of them experimental, and maybe at some point you close that service. But usually, these services are consuming a lot of resources. So we delegate the uh, processing of them to next uh, set of nodes. Could be like present servers. You want to play with it. Could be like notification to social networking uh, services, like sending a Twitter notification when you get a missed call. It might be easier to get a notification via Twitter or an SMS or whatsoever. And these are not really like critical, they're value added, but if you miss a Twitter notification, nobody knows if it's from the server or maybe Twitter was down, or it's nice to have, maybe people will stick to your service. It's unlikely that you could charge a lot eventually if you ever charge for them. So it's good to move everything that's blocking, everything that's uh, consuming a lot of the resources out of the main call routing engine. The worst part when you go actually for a large deployment is that, at least for us, uh, the biggest problem are not coming from the SIP routing, it's when you have to take in consideration all the other components that interact with them. Backends like replication data, having read-only database loads, and so on and so forth. So overall, it's actually a more complex uh, situation, but the focus now is on SIP routing and simulating uh, 
um, application. So we have a rather scalable uh, uh, architecture. What we should use to actually go more and more and having like this kind of uh, big uh, platforms working together. I would like to just give a overview of the main module we are using. Uh, it's called Dispatcher. I like it very much. From time to time, I buy a beer to the developer. It's a rather a small one, quite a lot of features, and it's practically uh, useful as a um, traffic dispatcher and as a load balancer. When we say traffic dispatcher, it's like we don't really count the resources to have some algorithms to decide where to send it. That box might be over busy, but actually at some point can help in scaling. So we can do hash over colliders or some technical from the C protocol that ensures every request inside the same dialog, it's like the same call go to the same node, no matter you do record routing or whatsoever, so you can have like a stateless, completely stateless, routed by this uh, uh, algorithm and all, all requests from the same uh, call are keeping the same server, then hashes over caller ID, over the call ID, uh, over request your URI to ensure that calls from the same caller goes to the box or calls to the same destination goes to the same box. And of course, we can store this um, value you want to hash in a variable and you can take it from, I don't know, remote party ID, authentication username, so all the other uh, attributes of uh, then we have the other set of algorithms that we call balancing algorithms. So we have this call load distribution that practically you have a set of next nodes and you count how many active calls each node is serving at a point and you uh, choose the least loaded. Weight based distribution, you have maybe a more powerful server or more powerful gateway, more channels and another one, uh, smaller number of channels, weight based distribution. Priority-based distribution, this is more like failure routing, try that one always, and if it's not working, try alternatives. And what I'm using and recommending is actually round robin, because this whole load distribution could maybe look uh, very appealing at the first side, but actually number of calls don't really matter in the terms of the performances of the box. Think about, I don't know, 10 calls to the same transcoding, I don't know, aesthetic free switch, all of them in hold, because, okay, you call and so they need to check something and suddenly back. So even those looking like, oh, I can do a lot of things, now they need to do a lot of transcoding. And also, maybe with some calls you don't have transcoding, with some calls you have transcoding, or even the transcoding algorithm could be more expensive for some calls, AMR, G729, so a real uh, load distribution should actually actively interact with the next node, <coughs> which is not really possible with it. There are many like custom deployments or RPC calls back from Asterix to increase or not the priority of the nodes in a uh, load balancer. So if I will have to choose between round robin or counting the calls, I will go for round robin because overall like, uh, in uh, average, you don't get more than one, two calls in addition to the average to one node because uh, by measurements, it depends up to such, uh, let's say, uh, statistics. The module itself can work with a text file, but can work also with a database. So if you want to keep it in the database, that's fine, not a problem, but the good feature of this one is can work with text file. And usually you don't have a lot of nodes. I mean, it's not like list cause routing that you may have a lot of rules. My prefix here is you just have a set of destination addresses. So even if you have like 10, 20, 100, it's still manageable in a text file. As opposite, as, it, I, as I have seen with LCR, you can have millions of prefixes with different uh, weights and so on and so forth. 
Using it, it's uh, uh, rather simple. I put here some some example just to to show it's not really uh, complex. It's not a complete example here. So you practically you just take this one and play with the default configuration file to get it working. But the specific ones for load balancing would be loading the module, setting some parameters. Like in this example, it's uh, taking the, the destination addresses from. Uh, database and some flags specific for uh, what kind of behavior you want for the load balancer. And these two small routes are practically what you will need to put in your configuration file to get a, a rather, uh, uh, let's say, uh, full feature set of load balancing with, uh, in this case, it's uh, round robin. Before executing this route dispatch, Usually in a carrying environment, you just need to do like routing requests within dialog, like by, you don't do load balancing for bytes, you just route them via route headers. Authenticate if it's an initial invite, like it's a trusted IP or maybe uh, username and password. And then instead of going to location to send it to a phone, you just do load balancer and send it to the next call. So there is a function giving the test destination group ID, so this is one in the previous example slide. This is the first value in a uh, line, it's practically the, the group ID. That's the first parameter, so it's working with many group ID. Then the second one, it's an ID for the balancing algorithm for its round robin. Because we want to do here failure routing, that means I'm sending to the first node. I don't get any reply, I want to send to another one. Otherwise, it would have been just enough to have select destination and relay. We want to intercept <coughs> failures, so we set this uh, key on failure. It's how we do this serial porting. And in the failure out, we handle uh, the exception case of um, not 200 OK. So if it's a 200 OK, this part of code will be never executed. Let's say we got a local timeout uh, taken by this condition, and then we look if we have another destination. If we have another destination, we keep arming the same failure out. So if we have like five destinations, we can try all of them. Let's say uh, a really bad luck for destination we are down. And uh, then just relay. As I said, the module, it's maybe no longer that small, but it's still one of the smallest ones. However, it has quite a, a, a nice set of features. So you can combine the load balancing and dispatching algorithms. You can even have in the same config file a couple of uh, uh, decisions based on, uh, on uh, a dispatching group. Working with a text file or database is quite important, especially if you want to put it on embedded devices or some uh, server that uh, you don't want to export the database system. Uh, can we load the routing record at runtime? So if you change, you, you, like adding a new node or removing a new node, you don't need to restart Kamaile, you update the file or you update the database and then you issue a RPC command saying reload. By the way, we are having uh, the internal architecture practically for each call, we select the next call, and all the other alternatives, we keep it in the context of the, that invite, that call. So reload will not affect existing call, will be just for the next call. That actually improves the con consistency, and we uh, avoid a lot of races that we may have access in the database. It can actually detect when the service is uh, down, when the next uh, uh, node is down, by like sending keep alive, there is no reply, we'll mark that node that's inactive, so the next call will not try to route to that one. We'll keep pinging that one, and when the node is becoming active, we'll add it in the list again. It has uh, quite some flexibility in the configuration file now, thanks to Peter, uh, if I'm not wrong. It can execute so-called event routes on different situations, like a node goes down and is detected by this keep alive, usually don't have interaction with the config file apart of this event route. So you may want to write a log message or maybe uh, send uh, a notification somewhere. 
and you can detect if the traffic is coming from a certain group that it's in a destination set. So now, the, the real subject of the presentation is scaling the load balancer, which practically is no subject. We don't know whether it reached the limits of Camaelio, so we didn't have any. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> But anyhow, okay, we'll do it for the research purposes, right? <laughs> so we had this, this is the previous example where we had it stateful forwarding. That means we want to intercept failure, so we need to keep the transaction in memory and we need to get the negative replies and try next and next uh, nodes, the easiest. Or you can add another layer of load balancing and from Stateful forwarding, you can switch to uh, stateless forwarding. So practically, we got rid of uh, the failure out handily, and instead of using T relay that creates a transaction, keeps everything in memory, does retransmission, we use forward. So we have the same select destination followed by forward. In this case, practically. The load balancer cannot intercept failures, cannot do retransmission, but because of SIP environment, usually the previous node in this case of phone will retransmit the invite. So let's say it's getting to load balancer will select a node that it's down, will be no reply back to the phone, the phone will resend the invite, and because you do round robin, practically you select the next box and eventually goes to the next server. As I said, it's practically scaling load balancer, so this one will be another load balancer doing stateful processing, detecting the real application server status, and so on and so forth. So this would be the uh, like the easiest and the first step to, to scale the uh, load balancer. The ratio of performance is this is couple of times faster in resources it's uh, much lower so you don't need memory pretty much like reading that buffer seeing where what we have to send it send it there and forgetting everything for a transactional stateful mode for each invite we <coughs> keep a lot of states in memory a lot of possible outgoing branches and so on and so forth of course it would work uh, uh, good enough and we, there will not be this DNS specific uh, problems, using SRV will be the, the ideal solution. You just add some records in, um, in your DNS server, then the load balancer, Camarillo, will be able to fetch all of them <coughs> based on priority, we'll select one. We have our internal cache where we put the rest of the records, if the first one is failing, we try uh, uh, the other one. I think we have a quite a good implementation of uh, DNS and good DNS support. We support this priority. We support the, the weight of uh, destination. We support even NAPTR, so this is just for load balancing, but overall the DNS uh, support in Kama area is uh, quite good. The last edition was also DNS sec. And the uh, plans for the next release would be to have some asynchronous support for, for DNS. The problem with the DNS is if it's not in your environment, practically DNS propagation can give you a lot of troubles. And if you don't control the load balancer itself, if it's not a good DNS implementation, it's also a big trouble. So I'm mainly going for the um, let's say application layer load balancing. So this is where practically solution with the Kamaelio module, like dispatcher, stateful, stateless, with DNS, which is an external uh, uh, system completely, just uh, interaction to some network communication with the load balancer. But there are many options that you can do it only with Kamaelio config file without really specific modules. So of course, balancing malicious traffic from uh, hack, from the attackers, you want to send it to DevNull. This is actually the simplest uh, 
around the clock in, in, in Camarillo. <laughs> and actually, I am starting to build from this one, so you understand that you need to put your creativity at work, not really looking always at modules. So, okay, we fixed the problem with attackers. They are load balancing to the proper uh, destination. <laughs> The next simple one, okay, you want to start like a front-end host, what you need to just forward it to the next host? Of course, somewhere here, as I said, you may add this attack detection, filtering, and so on. I'm focusing on what about us. So the simplest one is to do it to a specific IP address using forward, which can take a parameter, or you can update even the formula and then forward it. Besides that, you can keep adding some logic in your config file by the power of the configuration language to actually get a, a load balancer that is not using any heavy data structure that you may consider a dispatcher module can have. So you can use variables and uh, arithmetic operations. In this case, it's just with uh, two uh, nodes as the next layer, but you can add as many as you want. The idea is you keep a variable that you can increment, you do module number of uh, the next node you have, and uh, you select which node to use. You can practically switch from stateless to uh, stateful by replacing forward with T-Relay and using this failure route. Uh, this is uh, one of the examples. Uh, load balancer could be also not like a proxy, could be a redirect, so that can offload actually its processing, but not really being in the path of signaling, so can actually increase uh, the performances. So you get the request, we uh, detect or decide what's the next hop, and instead of forwarding, we just say a reply back to the previous hop saying, you will not yet send the request to this destination which is really simple with Tamayo. So if you look at the previous slide, which is proximal, and this part is common, the only difference, instead of forward, we use send reply, Q1, move temporarily, this Q2, but it doesn't matter. So it's a way to increase the performances. The previous solution was practically per process because we use private variables, so they are specific for each process. So you may, if you look at the traffic, you may see it's not really a round robin at the instance le level. Over the time, practically, you will not notice. But when it's starting, it may happen that you see two calls sent to the first node and so on and so forth, depending on how the, the kernel scheduler will select the the processes from Camarillo to, to work, you get CPU. If you want to get it per instance, practically instead of private uh, variable, you have to use shared memory variables instead of dollar $var. Actually, here it's dollar uh, $SHV. You have to do a bit of locking if you want to be, you know, that orthodox on load balancing, but if you don't do it, it's pretty fast. And you don't really have that uh, uh, races here. It's just some math operation. And the rest is pretty much the same. Selecting the destination and forwarding. This is kind of static configuration file. And uh, uh, you may think, OK, if I want to change an IP address, what I should do? If you change it and if you restart it practically, will be up before you take your uh, finger from the enter uh, key because it's rather small config file, it's parsed, doesn't need to connect to the database, doesn't create any big structures in, in memory, it's really like just reading this, this file as, uh, as the interpreter does it, so it's no time. I haven't put it here, but uh, actually you can use Share variable to keep this uh, uh, IP addresses and those variables you can change via RPC. But you just need to decide the name of the variables and then you can change all of them at runtime without restart. That 
could be an option. So besides that, like I presented a couple of uh, cases that you know you don't really need to look at modules to get a load balancer. A simple one, a very fast one. There are ways uh, to do it without any database interaction, any external file interaction, just configuration file uh, logic. The next level will be partitioning. At some point, you get the limits of uh, the box, no matter you want, no matter how memory you add. You know, 60 giga or 128 giga, you will reach it. So you have to add some partitioning, either selecting the node by DNS or by provisioning. Even Skype is running now a couple of hundred good super nodes. So even with a lot of money in the pocket, they couldn't find other solution than partitioning at some point. The interaction between nodes, depending on how many you have, could be like parallel forking to the other nodes or serial trying uh, or using a lightweight like sending to it and this guy knows where potentially the core has to go, load balancing to, to other nodes. So you kind of combine at this level like traffic routing, load balancing, uh, partitioning like number blocks or partitioning by label expression. You can do it partitioning by source IP. So we have this Joe IP module that can detect this coming from Germany and send it to this node or to that node. And with this kind of you know uh, a combination like putting up an answer, partitioning the users, you can really get uh, a nice infrastructure. This is actually like oh, this particular example could be useful also for redundancy. Let's say this link is down, this node can uh, communicate between them. Uh, if this one is down, the, the, the rest of the, the nodes are having uh, no problem. So in terms of the scalability, since we kind of got the scalability here, the solution is practically specific for each type of service you want to do, like classic telephony or rich uh, communication services. There are a uh, lot of options in, in Camarillo, and uh, I want to uh, mention here and make it clear some modules got a name or, or they got the name when the module was started. But the name that the initial developer was using for the first set of features, like PDT, you used to be for uh, prefix domain translation, but can be used more than that. So you have to look a bit beyond the name and the short description. You will need, of course, to uh, invest a bit of time and just use uh, some modules as tools. I would advise everyone here to look at entry module. You have seen the basic it's using and it's a nice way to optimize it when you have to match on prefix or on DID. Page table, it's a module that really gives you a lot of flexibility in the configuration file. I don't think we have at this time any deployment without page table loaded. And also the configuration file flexibility, the language flexibility is a really powerful uh, tool that you can play with it for scalability. So you can have good performances, but not looking at how do I get this one by just loading the module. Might not be there even uh, some, some names suggest, or might be there when some names don't suggest. So we have a good uh, community. We are uh, hopefully, uh, we're uh, grateful for having uh, good people uh, on our forums answering. We are not ranting that much <coughs> with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, basic uh, questions. Um, we try to improve it. I will have the, uh, uh, we invite an open discussion of how we can get to better with the project after that, this slide, but uh, just to say from now, probably key element in getting better, it's you jumping in and helping, 
we are answering questions and people are taking and running away, making a blog post and exposing it in a bigger context or going to our wiki and making a bit more around that subject will help everyone. So uh, we try to give as much as possible from the project point of view. And resources is not always possible. It's not always possible or not possible is maybe not visible as a developer. Some, and many of you are, some things might look that obvious that you don't even think you have to mention somewhere. And we answer with pleasure your questions that you have to maybe come back to our week or make a blog post so other will find it. So this is uh, what I wanted to present again. I'm finishing with uh, uh, a, great, a big thank to all our supporting and hopefully it was a great event for everyone. Uh, we are staying a bit around, so I'm taking questions about this uh, presentation, and then it's just an open discussion about uh, Kamailio and not only Boyd, what's wrong with Boyd 